Thank you. I will uh, stay away from the microphone for a while. Uh, you good with that? All right. Thank you. So, uh, thank you for allowing me to come here and speak on one of my most favorite subjects in the world, reggae music. Um, outside of football, soccer. <laughs> <laughs> reggae, football. Reggae, football, hey, you know, the rest of the world got football. So I'm gonna go with, um, as a young man growing up in Jamaica, I'm, I'm actually going, so I'm, everybody here has a Bob Marley story, reggae story, something where there's a connection, right? My connection, um, obviously, is um, being born in the land of it. So what I'm gonna do before I even get to Bob is um, talk about the things that guided the music and the melting pot of reggae music, you know. Sometimes the media has a way of um, telling us about um, Bob, 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 Bob Marley all the time, as if reggae started and ended with Bob, and it did. It reggae happened before him, reggae happened during him, reggae is still happening today. If you listen to most mainstream radio today, Almost every single song on the radio has the element of the dance hall in it, and I can hear them because this is my, my culture. So I thought um, I, uh, when David Dax uh, recommended me to Boris to do this, I'm like, I can talk about reggae all day long, no problem. I can do this. <laughs> One hour is not enough. Yeah, yes. <laughs> The whole day is not enough. <laughs> and so I'm like, yeah, I got this. I can, I can get this done. And then I started to think about it some more. I do a thing um, once a month for about nearly two years it's called Feel Reggae, where I bring in musicians to, to, to gig and talk about reggae <coughs> music and talk about it from its inception and what motivated them and blah, blah, blah. So, I do that all the time, so I, I think I thought I could do it, and then I started to think about it more and realized how huge a scope this was. So I kind of started out with what I wanted, and for me, as I've evolved, um, I, I, I think of reggae music as something to love, that, that spreads love, it has proven that way. Um, it, uh, I love frequency that travels the globe, it, it's in every single place on the planet of Earth, including places where you wouldn't think. I mean, all they had was a transistor radio. And friends of mine travel from Europe to India, wherever, none of it, reggae music, and it shows up everywhere. And the best part of that is that reggae isn't on any mainstream radio, so how does it do it? Reggae must be pretty amazing. I think it is, and um, and so the, the depth of it comes from, I believe, the love of ourselves, celebrating uh, humans and ourselves. Um, some people call it and, and, and portray it as a revolutionary type of thing, but it's revolution only when it doesn't suit what the status quo is. So it's not revolution, it's just truth, uh, respect for humans the truth we all want to live by. And unfortunately, sometimes, as we can see, it doesn't always work out that way. So, Jamaica had some of the most frequent revolts on plantations, slaves rising up and killing their uh, masters and soldiers and things, and it, just, it, was, it, it was becoming so frequent that I believe it is one of the reasons they think pushed everyone to say let's abolish slavery because Africans and the people on the islands outnumber the Europeans who own them. But through all that subjugation, you learn things about yourself as a human. And one of the things about it is that we all want to be free. And in order to, to find that freedom, 
um, that you can have because of what you're living under. Um, it can come out in song, it comes out in poetry, it comes out in your outlook on life. Because every morning when you get up and you have to cut sugar cane or pick cotton every single day, um, with limited meals and abuse, um, that, 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 that brings an energy in you that goes to your core. And sometimes when things come from the core, that's why we can relate, because it's a frequency that we all feel as humans, right? So, um, the colonial environment is something that we, as Africans, had to, 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 to live with. Um, and at some point, you know, here I, I, I grab I grabbed images that I thought would just tell a story. And for me, you know, there's this one man, he has no gun or whip that I can see. But no one challenges his right, because they all just go to work. And, then, and at this moment, I think of one of Bob Marley's, one of my favorite ones, is every day is work. And if you sing that song and watch that going, that's the energy he's trying to tell us about. This is what motivated Bob to sing those songs, right? Every day is work, right? And then this one, one of my faves, is um, the auction. And I'm going to stand up in front of it and be bad, but um, obviously this guy here, he's a house slave. So, is it a family up there? That's exactly what that is. Wow. That's a family up there. So this guy is a house slave. So he's making sure whoever the auctioneer is selling it to, um, this is a goodbye. Now what, what, what's also relevant about this is that these gentlemen here are just going about business, you know. This is, this is the early stock market, stock and trade. Okay. Trading and Africans are the stock, and that's the basis of the stock market today. So they would decide whether they needed the whole family or not, or if uh, maybe these guys were saying, you know what, we need the guy for the plantation, and we need the mom as a wet nurse, because she's just had a child, so she's able to suckle the master's children of the same age. So, as you can see, the man, as it's portrayed here, is standing. This is all the defiance he has in him, because he can't say much more than that. But it tells a story by body language, right? And these things I, we, we look at, because those things are the things that came together to, um, in the psyche of the people, to create regular music. Yeah, I don't think the music is just what we play. I think it's a, that's why it touches everyone everywhere, because it comes from here. It comes from the, the inner part of a human seeking um, equality for all humans. You know, this is a degrading thing to happen to anyone. So um, Jamaicans are influenced too, though. Once these things started to happen, we became influenced as, as well by the European because we had, they had to make themselves feel comfortable away from England and France and Scotland and all the places they came from, Spain, Portugal. I mean, we're talking pirates, we're talking noble people, we're talking the English court. Many of the the aristocracy built plantations all over the US and the Caribbean and Jamaica was quite a jewel in the crown. But we, we learn from other people, you know. Uh, Jamaicans are really high on martial arts. We, we, we totally love the martial arts. European fashions, of course, because that's what the normal people wore in our land. Um, 
American music from doo-wop to country music to the slangs from either Cockney London or the streets of Harlem. All that comes to Jamaica through the radio, through the music, through communications, through uh, visiting dignitaries. Like, uh, it's a melting pot. And then